Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Script, Pink Sheet and Invivo. I'm here at the Biotech Showcase 2018, uh, a meeting which runs parallel with JP Morgan Healthcare Conference, which is the traditional kickoff for the pharmaceutical industry where they talk about you know, sort of the issues that they face, uh, as well as you know, meeting up with investors and biotechs, where there's an opportunity to sort of discuss progress, as well as actually start maybe deal negotiations. One of the sort of the hottest areas in, in recent times uh, is gene therapy, which kind of is interesting because two decades ago it was hot, then it went cold, and it's now in, enjoying um, a renaissance. I'm joined, joined by uh, Mark Rothera, who is the president and CEO of Orchard Therapeutics, which is a UK-based company in the gene therapy space. You just raised $110 million, That's right. which is uh, just uh, yeah, a month ago or so. Indeed. So you know, what is it that you're doing in gene therapy that's actually attra attracted that bolus of cash? Well, as you said, I think it is going through a renaissance right now. And you know, what is really, I think, why investors are so excited is that they have seen the data that we've generated already in two indications using ex vivo lentiviral gene therapy where we are transforming the lives of these patients. So for example, in ADA skid or bubble baby disease, these kids have no immune system. Without treatment, they would die within one or two years. We've now treated 53 patients and 53 out of 53, we have 100% survival going out to in nearly six years now. And in the second indication called X-linked chronic granulomatous disease, these kids have no neutrophil ability to kill bacteria or fungus. They have a terribly compromised life. And we've already treated seven or eight patients and we've generated very encouraging data. So it's showing clinically that you're transforming patients' lives. So I'm glad that you um, uh, had, a, had a shot at actually uh, pronouncing the, the indications. But <laughs> I think I would have failed uh, completely. Uh, it's interesting though, you sort of said, right, okay, so you have this sort of seven year survival data, or, or it, at least uh, in yeah. some, some cases it's uh, seven Six years. years. Your, your company though is only two and a half years old, so wh where did the, the, sort of the, the technology and the idea originate? Yeah. Well, in a way, Orchard has come about through really close collaboration with leading gene therapy hospitals and academic centers in the world, like UCLA, Boston Children's Hospital, Great Ormond Street Hospital, and UCL, and Manchester. So we have licensed in, if you like, some of these programs that have been started in academia using lentiviral gene therapy, and then sort of use the ability to understand the industrial aspect of this, which is how do you make this to the standards of a regulator for commercial use. And so essentially, we're sort of working in symbiotic relationship with these centers. And that's why we're ahead of the game, because a lot of this work was already done, you know, over the last 10 years or 15 years. And and we're sort of helping bring the fruits of that science to patients. So what, what is the big challenge though? I mean, because you know, in gene therapy, every now and then there, there are challenges to sort of, uh, you know, hold back its progress. So as you look at what, what are the technical challenges that yeah. Orchard still faces? Well, I think the, you know, one of the obvious challenges we have is that we have really outstanding clinical data well before the whole manufacturing process has been put in place for commercial use. So we're rushing to catch up to put in place a high quality, robust system to be able to ship these cells which have been gene modified to have the right gene in it to a patient anywhere in the world. So we're catching up. But from a clinical point of view, we have a package that the regulators are happy with, both preclinically and clinically. Now it's filling in the, the gaps. So the regulators, are, are we talking about in Europe or are we talking about the US FDA? Or? So we're in talks with both. But for example, I think our first launch will be next year in, in, in the United States. So we're slightly ahead there, but we'll file in both US and in Europe. 
but with the U.S. mind, uh, we have already had an end of phase two discussion and we understand what we need to do. Right, okay. So you're, you're hoping to sort of do the sort of the pivotal studies sort of the end of this year? We're almost complete from that point of view. Because we're leveraging that academic work as well as new study work that we've done. Okay, so, so, so the launch actually is a commercial launch? Yes, in 2019. Okay, so... So this will be one of the first gene therapies, in fact, to be launched. And you're, and you're doing it on your own? Yes. Okay, and, so our, and is that the plan? Our vision is to be a global, fully integrated biotech that transforms patients' lives with gene therapy and in rare diseases. So actually our pipeline, we have already four programs and by the end of 19, we'll have one approved therapy and three in the clinic. Okay, so that's what you told the investors who put in the 110 yes. million. Yes. That that's 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 what, that's what we're trying to build. I think, you know, we really want to build a fully integrated company. Fully integrated, and that's because you know I've worked 20 years in the field of rare genetic diseases, and for example, I was at Shire Human Genetic Therapies in for seven years, and uh, you know I think smaller, more nimble companies really can service the needs of these rare populations and the physicians that treat them better than very large organizations. You don't need a huge organization. Right, right. So, so the technical challenge is the, the business challenge of actually you know, creating a business. Uh, yeah. you, you seem to have that uh, in, in place. I guess in the gene therapy space, so there's also the economic challenge, right, in terms of just the pricing of, of these yeah. products. So, so when it comes to commercialization, sort of, you know, where are you on your thinking? How, how developed are, are your, your plans? Well, clearly we have probably you know, a year and a half to really refine our thinking. But one thing I, I've already observed, having launched seven orphan drugs, is that I've never seen the kind of value proposition that this represents, right? So for example, if you think of an enzyme replacement therapy that may be used for 20 years or 30 years at three or four hundred, even five hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, for example, in our prime indication, ADA SCID, our first indication, you can use enzyme for 20 years at five hundred thousand dollars per patient per year, but there's still a 22 percent mortality rate over that period. So we're looking at a one-off transformational treatment that means you no longer need that kind of therapy and you don't get hospitalized in the same way that you would be with that. So it's an incredible value proposition and I think the balancing act is you know, finding an acceptable formula which is a sort of a win-win for both the company that needs a business model that works and society which has to pay for it sooner rather than later. Yeah. And so the you started those negotiations already or No, it's too early. I mean we're, the first priority is the filing of the BLA, which we're gonna do before the end of this year, and to progress the pipeline. You know the, the potential of lentiviral gene therapy is very substantial and so I think one of the other challenges I have is to grow the organization at the pace and you know, that can work with the academic centers to bring out the potential of this. So, so interestingly, you know, a lot of people who come to these meetings, they're either looking for uh, partners or they're looking for uh, investors or, or, or finance. Um, and, and you already have, you've both, I mean, because, well, you don't need the partners because you're going to do it yourselves. Yeah. And you've just, you know, pocketed $110 million in a, in a, in a financing. So what's your, your interest in, in this meeting? What, what kind of people are you trying to have uh, discussions with? Well, we, we want to continue to build strategic partnerships with the investment community because our goal is to be a leading global company in this gene therapy space and I think we can get there very fast and you know what are the bottlenecks one is continued source of funding and the other one is growing our talent base fast enough so that we can parallel process more you know we started off with one or two programs our pipeline has 
four disclosed programs. It has six, including two undisclosed programs. And it has a preclinical pipeline beyond that. So there's a lot that we can do. Okay, good. Well, Mark, thanks very much for, for, for stopping by. Maybe good. see you at the NED. Yeah.